Notice. The public are reminded that requisition took effect from November the 16th, from which date compensation is calculated. They will not, except for special reason, be disturbed in their possession until December the 21st. But from that date, the Admiralty may, at any time and without notice, enforce their right to immediate possession. It is therefore essential that every person should leave the area by December the 20th. That was about six weeks before we had to move out. And um, I think it was, I think the deadline was supposed to be November the 11th or something like that. It was in November, at any rate. We had to move out. Um, all our parents were upset, obviously, but I mean, there's kids we thought it was lovely to uh, <laughs> to be going somewhere else um, it was like going on holiday for us really but um, there you go a lot of removal lorries and uh, people moving their furniture and things like that Mr The army were coming in and taking a photograph of us. They said it was to, uh, they told me that it was to send back home to show people what we were doing for them back home. They had me walking up through the village and pretending I was going into a house. I was the last, last one, last of the children here um, and uh, I was all on my own so you know I was just wandering around the village I can remember my sister, she went up to the shop. This is how we knew it, because it, it didn't come out until the last minute sort of thing. And my sister went up to the shop and she came back and she said to mum that uh, we were all going to be evacuated. And I remember my mum saying to her that she was talking nonsense. <laughs> so uh, that was how we, we knew it in the very beginning. But... Um, then there was a meeting in the village hall uh, to explain everything. I can remember as plain as day, I was in the kitchen at home and um, uh, we used to go up to the roundhouse, the shop, the roundhouse, and um, during the week, um, you know, mother would send us up for a bag of sugar or whatever and uh, but the main shop was always done on a Saturday and my sister Margaret went up to get the you know the week's groceries and pay the bill and she came back down and she said uh, oh they're saying up the shop that all the villages are going to be evacuated and my mother said to her Margaret don't talk up such rubbish that just couldn't happen how could the farmers you know sort of get all the cattle, everything had to be moved and, she said, you know, you're talking rubbish. But I mean, in six weeks, it was true, we were out like. My father was working on a manor farm for the Bowden family. And it was my first term at the grammar school in Dartmouth and November. And I remember coming home from school, school and my father saying, we're going to have to be evacuated. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. We had had evacuees from Bristol. They had gone home because it was considered then safe enough. I thought, well, this, this is ridiculous. Uh, and Margaret, my sister, said she didn't know why she had to be evacuated because she'd been done. She'd got a mark on her arm to prove that she'd had, you know, vaccinated. And... 
then meetings were held in <clears throat> in Slapton, Stokenham, and Black Orton Church, not in Street Church, where people were invited to go along, and the Admiralty were to tell people what was, not exactly what was about to happen, but that it was a fait accompli. Everyone, 3,000 people from the area, had to go. My father was a farm. You see, you had all the animals. And everyone else was in the same boat. You couldn't ask anybody to help you because they were all having to leave. Um, and then my father, you see, he had to get somewhere where he could put, take some animals, which was very difficult. And then they had a sale at Kingfish Market for people, you know, this area to sell off some of their animals. Well, of course, because there were so many, the prices were, well, it almost give them away, you know. You lost a lot of money that way. The farmers themselves had a, had a lot to get on with, yes. I mean, they didn't only have their stock, which most of it had to be sold up, actually. And uh, all the... Well, you, you know, everything that was in the fields, they, they wanted them to take all that they possibly could, but uh, it must have been a bit of a nightmare for them. Of course, lots went and they never came back. I always think it, it really spoiled the village as far as uh, locals were concerned because there was uh, such a lot of people that didn't come back. Oh, we had six weeks to go. Yeah, 50% of the business was still outside the area because father used to have his van and travel to B Sands, All Sands, Pro and places like that. So what happened then, uh, the big fridge we had in the shop that was sectional and that was taken down and taken out to East Pro where a chap called George Jarvis at Well House had a large garage. So we assembled this fridge in there and went to plug them in, and of course they didn't have mains the electricity, so that was a wasted effort. <laughs> I suppose when you think of it, it's like Cathy and myself have often said, really, nobody had that much in those days. I mean, like in our house, you know, there was the table and chairs, there was no television, no washing machine, you know, no cooker. I mean, we had a lidstone stove that mother did all the cooking on. She used the the um, lidstone, the front of it, to warm the irons and um, do the ironing. And um, we boiled the kettles on it, you know. But So there was not that much to move like it would be in this day and age, really. For the older people, it must have been really very, very traumatic. I think for me, probably, it was, oh, new place. And then people said, but we've all to find somewhere to go and the men have to find work. They did provide lorry sometimes to help take it away. But that was worried taking it away, but when they, they come to come back and you had to find your own name. There was a lot of people, people that got really upset over it. In fact, there was one or two people were ill over it. And unfortunately, we uh, lost one lady, a farmer's wife. She uh, collapsed just before they were due to move out. She collapsed and died. There was no, as far as I know, where they said they would find accommodation if you didn't have anywhere to go. But as far as I can recall, everybody had a friend or a relative just outside the area, so they all doubled up, as you may say, for 12 months. Everybody got on with it. We had to do it, and that was that. There was no point saying anything different, was it, really? 